I was very reluctant to see Spongebob take the stage. When I was a kid, I used to watch Spongebob, like, religiously, mainly because Nickelodeon in the UK refused to show anything else. They often did days where they would just show every single episode of Spongebob one after another, and you know young Daniel was sitting there glued to that screen. But hearing this thing from your childhood is suddenly going to come and be a part of this thing that you've grown to love as you've gotten older, it's a little bit weird. And to be perfectly honest, it's a little bit scary. Are they going to handle this property with the passion that you have? Are they going to do it well? Are they going to make it just like another cash grab? Because if you're like me, when you hear Spongebob the musical, all you can picture is like the boxy Disneyland-esque costumes and you just instantly think of the worst. And yet, surprisingly, the Spongebob musical delivers. But how does it do this? And more importantly, how is it important? This is what I'm going to explore today. But if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Daniel. I talk about theatre. A lot. <laughs> Please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And it really helps me continue to make these weird videos that I just love to do. But, on to a video about me talking about why a talking sponge musical is important. <laughs> just a little bit of proof that I was actually a Spongebob fan as a kid. Okay, let's be real here. The Spongebob musical just needed to be passable. If the Spongebob musical was passable, then it's already good. <laughs> because who's expecting a musical about a talking sponge to be good? And yet, the Spongebob musical is good. <laughs> and like, I'm not just saying that, the Spongebob musical is good. However, there are some valid criticisms to be had. And before I say this, I, I have like one big criticism about the show. And I want to make it clear that I don't really hold it against the show too much, but I feel like it would be a discredit for me not to talk about it. Spongebob's biggest weakness is sadly its music. Now, now this is a hard one because even though, as I say, I don't hold it against it, I, I probably should because music in a musical, that's like, that's like the point. So if the music is bad, then like the show falters a lot. And I mean, I, I hold that against other shows that I've talked about. I hold that against any jukebox musical I talk about. I hold it against Mean Girls and this and this and this and this and Blood Brothers. And yet Spongebob, I, I kind of give it a free pass, but I'll, I'll talk about it fairly. I'll talk about the positive of this first. Every song is written by a different artist. All of them commissioned by the Spongebob musical to give in one song. Now this is good on one hand because then on your marquee you can have all these stars. And uh, James, do you know any of the people who wrote music for the Spongebob musical? No. Okay, I'm going to list quite a few of them. And I bet you, you will know at least a couple of them. Okay. So um, David Bowie. Yeah. Sarah Bareilles. Okay. Cindy Lauper. Hmm. John Legend. Hmm. Playwright Tees. Yeah, they're just like a handful of people. I yeah. But how many of those would you recognise? Uh, David Bowie, Yeah. Alice, yeah. I so remember. that's the kind of point I'm getting at. Like, no matter where you are, no matter who you are, you will know at least one person in there. I mean, we know Sarah Bareilles from Waitress because we're we're Broadway kids. Uh, we know David Bowie because he's an absolute living legend. You will know someone from it. And that is powerful marketing. Because if you just went to the plain white tees and you went, hey, can you write an entire musical? You're only catering on that one person to get you in, you know, butts in seats. But if you have this massive board of different people, somebody might go, oh, I know Panic at the Disco. They wrote a song in this. Maybe I'll listen to that one song that they wrote. And then they go away and listen to that one song. And then maybe they'll go, oh, okay, I really like that. I'll listen to the entire show. And then go on to, okay, I really like the entire show. I'm going to go see it. That is powerful marketing. But then the problem comes with the fact that everyone has written different songs from it. Now, I have to give massive props to Tom Kitt, who was the musical supervisor for the show. Because he tried his best to kind of put this together and get it all into like one track list that all kind of mixed and worked well together. But I think it's it's an impossible job because 
all these different artists, they, they're only given their one prompt and their one song, and they don't get to hear everyone else's songs, and they don't get the whole, like, way of working it all together, and they're probably working on other things at the same time, so if Spongebob comes back and says, hey, this song's not working too much, we need a couple of rewrites, they might not be able to have the time, or they might be not, not be able to get it in, and there's a lot of problems that comes with this way of working. And it does lead the Spongebob musical musically feeling a little bit disconjointed. Disconjointed? Is, is that a word? Is that a word? Yeah. Daniel, look up, is that's a word? This Disjointed is the word. Disjointed. <laughs> it's how on the cast recording you go from a song about the world ending and everyone screaming and crying and it feeling really sci-fi and dystopian to a song that's really chill about being with your best friend. Yay, let's have fun together. You're my best friend forever. BFF, that stands for us. I do think it's quite easy to look past this fact when you actually do listen to the songs. I mean, none of them would ever crack my, like, top 10 list of favourite music theatre songs, but I think they work very well within the kind of world of Spongebob. Bikini Rotten Day is such, like, a perfect introduction to this world and showing you that they want to do this right. I'm Not a Loser is so perfectly musical theatre and I'm so thankful they gave it to Squidward because he's the character with the most theatricality and I didn't know I ever needed to see a tap dance with a character with four legs but oh my god I'm so thankful I've seen that now. <laughs> not a Simple Sponge is not only a good song in the terms of the Spongebob musical but it's also just a good song in general. I love a good I Want song and I think Spongebob does a really good job at it, and it does make you really feel for the character. Even though he is literally a talking sponge. Why are you making me feel sad about a talking sponge? And like, I, I have little lyrical problems, and places where I think it goes a little bit too childish, but like, what am I, what am I meant to expect? It's a musical about a talking sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea. It's going to be childish. It's not going to be perfect. I think, however, there are two things that Spongebob Musical needed to get right. It needed a strong story, something that was worth spending time on and worth putting on stage. They decided to do a end of the world story and it does borrow a lot from the film, but I think it kind of proves its own weight in a way. But if that's a valid criticism for you, then that's a valid criticism for you. But I think more importantly, it needed to create the world. The Mean Girls musical and Spongebob both premiered on Broadway in the same season. And I have discussed my reasons in detail of why I don't particularly like the Mean Girls musical. If you are interested, again, links up there. Check it out at the end of the video. But to summarise, I think the Mean Girls musical is a little bit lazy. And it's just clearly the film on stage with very little extra thought. And if you disagree with that, fine. But that's just my personal opinion on it. Funnily enough, though, I think I could say the exact opposite of those two points for the Spongebob musical. Even if you don't like the Spongebob musical, you cannot call it lazy. Just look at the set design. The way it's constructed with little things that remind you of the show, like the neon floral print and the bubbles. The thought that went into making everything based on trash and rubbish and things you might find fallen to the bottom of the ocean. The way the set expands out and stretches across the entire front of the theatre to be truly immersive and create a world of wonder for the kids and nostalgic adults to walk into and really feel like they have stepped into the world of Bikini Bottom. Look, I've said it time and time again. I am a sucker for set design. And even though theatre is what? SUBJECTIVE! <laughs> I don't think you can disagree with me here and say that there hasn't been some dedication put into this set design. A famous theatre quote is that you don't go away from a show humming the scenery. And I absolutely hate this quote. And I hate it so much because theatre, especially musical theatre, is meant to absorb you into this whole other world. A place that is 
more fun and entertaining or is there to teach you something uh, more realistic and set design is a massive tool to use to bring you into these worlds i cannot even imagine how it would feel being a kid and you've watched spongebob all your life you've been a massive fan of it since you were born and being able to walk into that room and see this world that's been trapped behind your screen suddenly come to life and feel alive and you're right in the middle of it. And also how they incorporate the soundscape into the show. I mean, James, you said about this because this wasn't in my original script, but you were talking about the sound effects, how they literally have someone at the side of stage, like I'm pretty sure he's on the show as well, making sure everyone has a little sound effect. So like Mr. Krabs has a little waddle walk with the and Spongebob has like squashing of the shoe and putting all these things in and making that soundscape feel wide and vibrant and like giving you those hints to the show. Like that's so impressive just to see everything come together. And the fact that I'm talking so passionately about a musical, about a sponge who lives underwater is completely insane to me and just proves how much dedication and time and energy was put behind this show. And even with all this, the musical still adapts unlike Mean Girls. A key way to see this is in the costumes, because as I said before, nobody wanted to see the massive boxy costumes, no one wanted to see like mascot Spongebob singing. So what they do instead is they use silhouettes, putting in hints of what they would wear or saying we don't need to paint Spongebob yellow but we can give him a yellow shirt, that's enough. We can give him his classic square pants with brown shorts. We can do this, we can dye someone's hair pink to make it look like a comb to be Patrick. We can give Sandy an afro and that more represents the silhouette of the helmet that she would wear and all this stuff is really clever and really creates this world even though it's not completely replicating this world and that is how you bring something to the stage you adapt you see what works you see what doesn't work you play around with it so you're not just seeing the show with music you're seeing a musical I am still talking about the Spongebob musical passionately. <laughs> you can say whatever you want to say about the plot and stuff to this show, but there is so much dedication and love within this set and design. Everything about the design is so good. But even with all this, even with all the musicians working on the show, even with the cast, which I didn't even get to talk about, who were so perfectly fitted for all these roles, the show still closed. But what I think is most important is how Spongebob left the legacy. We have seen so many shows go from screen to stage recently. And yet I don't think any of them have really matched the heights that Spongebob has or has been as effective in bringing a show from screen to stage as Spongebob has. Spongebob proves that these shows are worth putting on stage. As long as you have the right design ideas, as long as you have the right way to translate them onto the stage. Another show that does this is Beetlejuice. It's done so well by Beetlejuice, by adaptation, playing with the script, not being restricted by what's already on the page. It's in the word, adaptation. It's not directly just going, pff, pff, you're on stage now. It's playing around with it and seeing what works in a different format. People who are making these screen to stage adaptations just need to take the time and have the passion and energy, just like Tina Landau and her amazing team behind Spongebob had. Spongebob inspired people. It inspired people to get creative, we saw fan art, we saw cosplay, we saw covers and celebrations of this little musical all about a sponge. A show that was initially shrugged aside and labelled as a cash grab. I went out and I asked people why they loved Spongebob. And of course there was a couple of people who said they didn't like it. But the people who did, they were so passionate about it. People said it was a message of 
light in like a world of darkness. And people were saying stuff like this about the SpongeBob musical. Going into how it's helped them and how it's taught them to be a little bit more positive, even in the worst situations. How I found an entire blog post where somebody was talking about how SpongeBob had helped them through dark times. How all they wanted was for SpongeBob to come to Broadway and when it did, how happy they felt. And most importantly, how SpongeBob was a safe place for them. Because for a musical to be important, all it needs to do is evoke a feeling. Musicals that are more highbrow, like Dear Evan Hansen and Come From Away can do this. They might do it by playing with a darker emotion or playing with a lighter emotion. Or in the case of Come From Away, playing with a mixture of both. Taking you for a truly human situation. Fear and anger and how that can be combated with hope and love and respect. And yes, a musical like Spongebob can and has done that too. And that is what makes it important. And if it gives hope to one person, just one person to feel inspired or motivated by this musical, then Spongebob is the most important show on the planet. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. It really makes me feel appreciated. If you want to see more from me, here's some of my other videos. But um, for now, I'm just going to go and sit down and realise that I just spent way too long talking about a musical, about a talking sponge, and a rapping plankton. Bye.